Good afternoon. Today is May Thursday, May 28th. It is 4.04 in the afternoon. This is a meeting of the Hanson Recreation Commission. We are meeting remotely in accordance with state guidelines and open meeting laws for those for the current COVID-19 situation. Um, those in attendance are Diane Cohen. Melissa Scartese. John Zuko. Brian Frazetti. Billy Boyle. Dory Jamison. Dory. And who is? My mother's on here too, but uh, she might have a problem. Okay, she's calling number. Joan, can you unmute and just? Okay, if it's okay. So Joan is here. <laughs> and who is user? I'm not sure, but it might possibly be um, Whitman Hanson Access. I'm not 100% okay. sure though. All righty. I don't believe so. This is Ryan in IT. I'm willing to bet it's someone probably uh, joined with a computer and it's just an, uh, an error. Okay. Okay, so the first thing on the agenda is um, the minutes from the last meeting. Did everybody have a chance to read the minutes that Dory sent? Yes. And if, and if so, would anyone like to make a motion to well, accept okay. the I'm sorry? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from March 9th, 2020. Thank you so much. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, I'm going to ask people, Mr. Zucco. Aye. Okay, Miss, Mr. Frizzetti. Aye. Okay. Joan Frizzetti. Brian. Are you in the same room with her? No, she's in a completely different room. I'm gonna go check real quick. Okay, Melissa Scartisi. Is she here? Is she here? Yep, I'm here. Approved. Yep. Approved. Okay. Um. Well, I think what we're going to do is just accept the minutes and assume that Joan doesn't have a problem with them. Okay. Moving on. We are going to have the rec director update. I think that's next. Okay. Uh, facilities wise, um, we obviously just got the caretakers back this week. We're having them focus outside. Um, so they've started on the front of the lodge. Well, I'm kind of. I'm, I guess this is kind of new business too, but we'll talk about facilities in general. Um, we've got to get the inspector out to look at the stove as it's hooked up now. Okay. Um, we're going to have Brian, the floor guy, back at some point to uh, now do the stage. Once we're able to get the stuff off the stage, we'll have him come back and uh, poly that. Have the floors been done? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the floors look awesome. It, it almost looks like a skating rink. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, as far as I know, I, I think the, the leaks been minimal, if anything, in the kitchen. So we've been pretty good there. Okay. And yeah, other than that, um, I guess facilities wise, we'll just talk about the, the grant really quick. Uh, I'm waiting on an update from John, which I should get tomorrow morning. So I will uh, be sure to update Diane when I get the word there. And then I'll update the rest of the commission as well. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns? All right. I missed part of that. Was that the facilities part? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, did we ever get an update on tipping fees from uh, Republic? I'm sorry if I missed it. No, you did not. Did we get updated on what? What was the question? Uh, if Republic was charging us tipping fees? Uh, from what I can tell, I think they stopped. I got to look at the invoices again. I haven't been okay. able to get in touch with anybody at uh, Republic, which is why I haven't paid the last two invoices because they're still charging us for phantom dumpsters. Uh, I have sent out the cancellation notice to them. I got the um, certified return letter from the post office. So they, they have our cancellation notification. I'll send it via email as well. But according to what their contract said, we met the 60-day deadline for canceling the contract. So we'll just have to uh, bid out to new companies to get a new, comp uh, new waste company. Okay, I, I spoke to Brian Smith uh, briefly about it, and I thought he was going to be at the meeting tonight, but apparently he's not. Uh, he said, uh, whenever that contract ends, whoever we decide to have, uh, we need to have them ready to go because they won't touch the dumpsters that are there now. So you have to time it out so when Republic removes their dumpsters, whatever that date that may be, there's usually a one to two day turnaround for the new dumpsters to come in. So he, he said it might be kind of a uh, a crunch situation where we want to make sure whoever it's going to be is ready to go right away. Yeah, and just knowing how responsive Republic has been, if we need to drop new dumpsters and then wait for Republic to get theirs and then we'll get the new dumpsters in the old locations, that's what we, we might have to do. Okay. Um I have a question. I'm I'm sorry for interrupting anybody. Um, why are we waiting to bid? Shouldn't we have been getting bids the whole time since we know that Republic was going to be canceled? Like why why do we not have bids already? I have to reach back out to Chris. He was talking to a couple of companies, so I just have to follow up with them. I've been focusing more on some of the kitchen stuff and obviously some of the COVID stuff. So I will check in with him. He had a couple of dumpster com com companies uh, that okay. he had recommended. So we're going to look to see, you know, who the best one is. Okay. And, and hopefully somebody local. So we're not calling Arizona every time we need to get in touch with somebody. Okay. And who was the contact at Republic that we had reached out to before that said the pro, um, the phantom dumpsters were taken care of. I thought they had a new person on our account. We do. He is not responding to my emails or calls. Um, he gave us a credit, I believe, uh, two invoices ago. But when they send the invoice, it still has all the old stuff on it. So okay. I emailed them and told them we need to get a credit for the next invoices and then we'll send out the payment, but I haven't heard anything back. All right. If I'm not mistaken, I believe trash pickup is considered an essential service. So someone should be in the Republic office. So if you can't find anybody to answer your phone calls, Bill, um, Please let me know by tomorrow, and I will physically go down. I will let you know. Thank you. Any other hey, questions? The, yeah, the the stove. The, what is, is the stove? The grill? What is what is the stove update? What was put in? So I haven't been there. So we so put what? in a ten burner and two oven uh, stove. Okay. So and that, needs that needs yeah. to be inspected? Yes. Yeah, before we're able to use it, we'll have to have the uh, gas inspector come down. And has that the, the, appointment been scheduled? It has not been scheduled yet. Can you do it by tomorrow? I need to make some pizzas. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can get them out here. 
Okay. How about how about the pizza ovens? What's the status on them? They have not been fixed. Well, at least the one that's got the pilot issue has not been touched yet. So are we Did waiting you, for a part for any of this or no? Is that that looks expensive? That's in Chris's wheelhouse. I will find out. I know that they were looking into the part. I don't know if they've got them yet. Yeah. Okay, can somebody maybe reach out to Brian because that was another conversation I had with him. And he said with as many stove part stores in this area, he has no idea why we're having a problem getting a part and that it shouldn't be an issue. Um, maybe reach out to Brian Smith because, again, he's he's a facilities guy. It's just um, a recommendation. I'm just curious too. Like the stove is. When was the stove connected? I don't. I would have to reach out to Chris. I don't know the exact date. Was it more than a week ago? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, it was mentioned at the last meeting we had that it was done. So if it's been connected, then we should have an appointment for an inspection and. Uh, all right, anyway, so we need an appointment for an inspection and we need the parts for the other stove. So I'm not sure that the stove maintenance companies are considered essential, but now the guidelines have been set for more people opening, I think some appliance repairs, repair places are considered essential in case you are heating system broke or whatever, those are considered essential. So my question would be, it, can we get a company? Can we get a hold of those parts? So at the, this week, we should have an answer to that. Um, anything else regarding this? What did the total grant that you gave to um, to the TA come out to? Do you know offhand? Approximately twenty-seven thousand dollars. Twenty-seven. Okay, so that was more. That actually came out to more than the than the and grant. Slightly, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, I lost my agenda. What is the next item on the agenda? My screen. Just... We through with facilities. Uh, programs, but... online programs. Okay. Online programming. Yeah, um, not a huge update on programs. Obviously, there's not much we can do. I am um, in touch with the Board of Health because we are looking at trying to maybe set up a scavenger hunt or something for people to come up and have an activity to do and obviously keep them spaced out and outside um, but there are some logistical issues with still having people being too close in certain areas of the camp so i have to give a written proposal to teresa and the board of health and then uh go from there and see how we can put it together we and need to set up a meeting with the board of health according to uh, at the last meeting of the bos and they give us the what we need to do to prepare things like there are there's there is a memorandum out of what what cleaning we need to do how we need to get the uh the uh the bathrooms done too and everything else and what has to be done so there's quite a few guidelines so we need to have a meeting with the board of health to to produce to them, to give to them whatever we plan to do and how we want to open and what we want to open so we need to you set are, up a meeting with Tim. You are correct, Joan. We do need to set up a meeting with the Board of Health because we are presenting, or Bill will be presenting, on June 9th to the Board of Selectmen all the plans and protocols that will be put in place for a possible opening of the camp. Not just what we will do with these guidelines that we currently have, but what we will do if other guidelines you know loosen up i don't imagine anything's going to get more restrictive than we're at now because we can't even open so we should have in place a set of guidelines 
for various scenarios. So right now we have Republic, the stove, um, the stove inspection. We have the protocols and so far that's a good list. But you need to get you need to get the guidelines. The only the one that can approve the opening is the Board of Health. And that has to go before you go to the uh Board of Select. Right. Before you go to the Board of Selectmen, you have to get everything set up through the Board of Health. Right. So, so objection would be to set up a meeting with them. Okay. okay. Uh, in yeah. terms of the online program piece of the agenda, um, as John had recommended, our town administrator, I reached out to the Mansfield uh, rec director. She's using an online company that just allows people to post, you know, different online virtual programs and everything. Uh, they don't have a Boston location yet. Um, the one that they're utilizing, it's called Kids Out and About Providence. But there are a bunch of online resources and, and just things that people can do, whether it's from their home or kind of out in the backyard. Well, are the, but maps, obviously, are, the map, are the maps and such on our website yet? Yes. They are. Okay, so could we maybe put something together like um, see what you see on the walk and let us know and, you know, some kind of a chat like that. Yeah, we can put something out there, but again, I will check with the Board of Health because I don't necessarily want to encourage people to be doing stuff or at least give the perception that we're telling people to violate certain social distance things. Okay, well, tech, I think... Um, I remember someone called the police and the police said the camp was available to be walking at. So I just, all right, reach out to the Board of Health and see what they say. Yeah, all no, right? the, the camp is open for walking. I just want to make sure anytime we put something out there that obviously our messaging is safety first and all that. And we can put those stipulations in with whatever we say. And yeah, and you'll get called I, uh, every... in the post today on <laughs> sure the trail marker for I'm the Bay Circuit uh, Trail, and um, the Conservation Commission has already been up here All right, to hold on. put out some guidelines, so to speak, of walking on the trail. So even right. if we just kind of post okay. that again and just say adhere to this, and then you know enjoy hiking. Yes, and see yeah. you know. Let us know what you've seen. What kind of animals have you seen? Any interesting plants that you've seen? Any interesting noises you heard? Like we need to, you know, at least make it a little bit interactive. Uh, we can, part of the issues that our Facebook page is set up that people can't comment. It's more kind of informational only. Um, but, you but it's possible that people can just kind of make their own post and then tag us in it and then we can at least kind of get uh, a little bit of press and whatnot that way. Can't you? But most I of our you posts aren't allowed to be commented on. Hold, on. hold on. I need to handle this sort of like the Board of Selectmen. I need everybody to mute. And then when Bill is done talking and giving us a complete update, if you would like to speak, please unmute and I will call on you. Waiting for people to mute. Can't mute on telephone. You were muted originally. No, I wasn't. The bottom button in the middle of that phone, Mom. I say if it's a flip phone, I don't know that they have mute buttons, but I'm not sure if it's a flip phone. Okay, I'm not getting a signal that caller four, three, two, or five, or six are muted. 
Uh, this is Ryan. Can I interrupt quick? You may. Please. Uh, if you press star six on your telephone pad, it'll mute yourself, and you can press the same to unmute yourself. Thank you. Star six. Do we know who Caller 6 is? No, nope, it's okay. All right, we'll move on. So with protocols for hiking, we will use what Conservation Commission has put up. We can put something through on the town website or the Camp Kiwani website. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Facebook page. Don't we have a Camp Kiwani website? And I think we have a. We do. We have the. Do we have a trail up on that? Right. And don't we have an Instagram site? We do. Okay. So all of these things can be put on those. We should um, invite them to send, you know, pictures of what they've seen down there, and just pictures of them hiking. And we will post them on our site. Sounds Maybe. good. Yeah, I can put a post out. Okay. Anything else regarding? I'm hearing myself echo. <laughs> We're hearing a lot of you. I can hear it as well. You could, okay, Bill. You can continue. Say, like, what did you like on our hike? I'm sorry. What was that, Melissa? Oh, I think it was Dory. I was just saying, you could just say, what did you like on our hike, you know? Excellent. Feedback. Yes. What? Tell us what you liked on your hike at Camp Kiwani. Yeah. Yep. What did you like on your hike? Perfect. Little play on words, little rhyming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can't bring up my agenda again. So, Bill, next... Yeah, the next one was just caretakers back to work. Um, so obviously, caretakers are back to work. Um, they are. I did this week <laughs> schedule people. They're happy to be back. Oh yeah, people are have been scheduled individually. I, I did it more again, a little bit out of precaution, and also just until I get a bigger feeler for the the budget, just to make sure if we give the caretakers extra hours for groundwork and maintenance that we're not going to push the budget. So I'm looking at that. We will likely within the next week or two get more than one caretaker on a shift and just have them working in different spots of the camp. And then that way they're working together without working together and we can get things done faster. Right. I know yesterday um, Bill was there with Jackie and, you know, they were there for like six hours and they got a lot done together. That's just one day that I know of. I'm sure, Billy, I know you know you've been there and, you know, you know more. So that's a good start. Oh, yeah. Between uh, Bill and Jackie, um, Jen was yeah. cleaning up the front of the area yeah. on Tuesday. Okay. We had so, Colin yep. today cleaning up some of the south end. Okay. So what yeah. kind of, yeah. what kind of um, progress are they making on cleaning up the drive? Because that's a definite concern of mine. Um, cleaning up the branches, the roofs on all the cabins need the pine needles swept off, all of those kinds of things. So with the schedule that I sent out that I CC'd you on, I have Brian coming in this weekend to work on the driveway piece. Um, Colin did have it on the schedule today to take some of the pine needles off the roof, but because of the weather, um, I didn't want him up on a ladder because it was sprinkling. So he stayed on the end. Uh, you know, we'll look next week, especially as the weather's looking pretty good. We'll continue with the uh, saving of the roof. So Get him more of the driveway. So was there something else he did in place of that? Well, yeah, he's he started cleaning up all the brush and leaves and everything around the cabin. Okay. Any other 
comments, questions, concerns about around caretaker duties? Uh, yeah, if I could, Diane. Go ahead, Brian Frazetti. Um, I was I was given a little bit of thought, and I was listening to all the recordings and whatnot. And I know the caretakers are now back to work. I was I had listened to last week uh, meeting online, and there was a discussion about giving weekly updates of what was going on at the camp or or whatnot. I was wondering if we might, as part of that weekly update, just to make it easier. Um, get a list of what caretakers are working and what they're being assigned during the course of the week. Bill? Yeah, when I send out the weekly update that I said I will as we're doing all these virtual meetings, I'll just send you guys out the copy of the schedule as well, and then you can see what they're working on. Okay, great. Now, I didn't get one last week. Did they go out or no? We're waiting for next week. I think I, I sent one out the week prior. I think I missed last week. Okay. Right. So can you send out last week's today? Yeah, I mean, I might as well just send one out tomorrow, and I can just include everything when I send it out. Works for me. Okay. Um, Diane, you had touched upon websites. Could I go back to that for just one moment, please? Certainly. All right. Um, a while back, uh, John Zuko had gotten uh, back our dot com webpage and whatnot. Uh, he was previously assigned with being an admin to the Camp Wani social media pages, the dot com, Wedding Wire, and Facebook. Um, this was not intended for him to answer a post or make any changes, but to keep the commission updated on what was going on. I don't remember how or why he was removed but I would like to set forth a motion for him to be reinstated as an administrator to oversee the sites. You would have to go through the town administrator. Because <laughs> it was at the request of the town administrator that I had to take him off. Well, um, okay, so here's... Happened. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. That decision was made by the Recreation Commission. It's under the authority of the Recreation Commission. Uh, the town administrator does not have the power to oversee that part of our running of the camp. Right. They do not. Um, it's only there for oversight, Diane. It's not for John to, to answer any emails, to to anything else, but it's it's just an oversight. He may see something that could uh, maybe help, you know, Bill along. He might see, you know, something that may help, you know, draw some more business, maybe we could put more pictures on there. Uh, such things like, I noticed on the dot .com page, we still have like upcoming events that shouldn't be there anymore because they got canceled. Right. And maybe we can, maybe we could put pictures up of the cabins, all the pictures of like fishing. And then on the main page, um, maybe say when restrictions are lifted, we hope to start back up with some past events as well as future ideas. I mean, these are all things that, you know, John Zuko is very well versed in. I, I noticed feel very comfortable that if he worked along I with Bill on that. Thank you, Brian. I noticed that as well. Um, the looks like the sites haven't been updated. So until I will ask, actually ask Mr. Stanbrook about that, because until I get I feel that the website is under control and continually being monitored and updated. I think maybe some assistance in that regard would be beneficial. So I'm going in and deleting the golden oldies. I had gone through and removed this. I didn't take out the bridal show because right now it's scheduled for August and we don't know yet what's going to happen with that. Bill, um, I I, can I interject not. really? Can I just interject yep. really quickly? I just wanted to ask about the golden oldies. We, I had sent out um, correspondence regarding that, and I had said that it was postponed. So I know we had paid for that event. Um, is there any way that instead of pulling it out, can you just place postponed? Because I think it would be advantageous for the camp to have like it as part of a summer series. You know, to I know in talking with the board of health, um, Teresa Cocho, she said moving forward. 
there could be something to be done, but later in the summer. And I, and I totally think that this is well worth having at the camp. Um, you know, maybe late August, even all these people are so bummed. We've rescheduled twice and there is a great interest in it. I mean, we didn't sell out the first time, but I, I really don't want it to be taken down. Is there any way we can just put postponed? Yeah, I'll just change it to postponed. Um, in the meantime, have we spoken with those people to determine a possible date for maybe August, September, when things loosen up a little bit, just to be ready so that we're not last on the list and having to postpone it again should things be closed again due to another round of this. So, um, Diane, I don't know, if, was that a question directed to Bill? It's whoever is uh, handling well, the holding. Uh, well, I've got a. I've got to say that one thing I can I can say is I I would like to have from us and I know when I went went in front of the selectman's office one of the biggest things that they had was what is your um, I'm going to use the word protocol for making sure that we're in compliance because that's the town's number one um, concern that we're in compliance and because we're looking you know towards the you know later times we don't really don't have a crystal ball to say what the governor is going to issue i got to tell you they they def definitely ixnade the story walk for now because i really didn't have any of um that that material but i can tell you that um i'm going to be getting some material from uh, the board of health in other towns because the children's museum is doing other things in other towns and i'd like to see based on what they have for protocol i can't I'm sure there are going to be some differences, but for the most part, I think that would probably apply to us as well. But I think it would be great to have um, our commission come up with, this is what we would like, obviously with the um, caveat that if it's, you know, uh, approved or if it's in compliance with, um, you know, the regulations, because we can't wait for them. If we wait for them to come up with those regulations, we don't have the planning period. We've lost that planning time. So we yeah, have to um, come up with something. We have to come up we, with a protocol. We have a, motion on, we have a motion on the table. So we call it point right. of order. No. We that motion. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it needs a motion. Don't we just. Well, the admin thing, that's the Brian's motion. Um, if, if you don't mind, Brian, I would like to speak to Mr. Stanbrook about it first before we do that. And so I'd like to amend the motion a little bit. Um, can we put forward the motion? Um, it's basically the same thing as we do with the Board of Selectmen. Um, after, if the town administrator has no issue with it, then the the motion moves forward. If he does not, he needs to supply us with his why. Right. He can't move pending, forward. Pending approval or explanation by the town administrator is what I would like. Correct. It, correct. And if, if for some reason he has a reason why it cannot be done, can we please get that in writing? Absolutely. So. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Would anyone like to second that motion that Brian had made earlier, the new the new amended motion, including the communication with the town administrator and getting explanation in writing should it not be approved? Anyone want to just second the motion? Because it was already made. I, I can't second because it concerns myself, right? No, you can, you can second. second. Okay, I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion on that? 72. All those in favor? I'm going to have roll call. Brian Frazetti? Yep. Yep. Juvie? Can, can I recuse myself? I'm sorry. I had a little family emergency. I wasn't. Um, there for all of it. Could I just okay. recuse myself? Say, sorry. No worries. Melissa? 
Yes. Joan? <laughs> she disappeared. Let me do a thumbs up, maybe, Brian. Can you just see yep. if let me, run, let me run in there. Oh. All right. She's having a hard time getting back on. She had to give a thumbs up, though. Okay. I will just drag her into. Is, is it okay if I just drag her into my phone? Because she's having problems. Yes, it is. It is. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right. Hey, Diane. So, hey, Diane. Um, who is that? Hey. Juvie? Right. Sorry, it's Melissa. it's Melissa. I just had one question on that. So, are we? Was that to, that motion that we just approved was just to add John, right? Not to replace right. Bill. Not to replace anybody to add John. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Moving on. So the motion is carried. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dan. No worries. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda. I'm afraid I'm going to get off here. So yeah, these next three. Oh, am I still muted? Nope, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, the next three are uh, requests that Juvie asked to be put on the uh, the agenda. So if she wants, she can take this and run with it in terms of the Boy Scouts rental, the service project, and the farmer's market. Okay. Juvie, do you want to go or are you tied up right now? Yeah, no, so I just wanted to um, let everybody know. If I have to go, I, I might get a um, – my son's at um, the hospital, so if I get a phone call, I need to get off just to – let everybody know. Um, so I want to just try to cover as much of the information as I can because I'm speaking on behalf of um, another um, organization. So my affiliation with them is that, you know, through the Boy Scouts, um, Troop 22, I hope I'm getting it right, but it's the Whitman Troop. They have about 100 um, kids and the, the older adults remember camping at Camp Kiwani. And they're really, really interested in the possibility of trying to camp there. Um, the, the idea is this, of course, this is all pending approval. So they're going to uh, also monitor what the, obviously the governor will say, but as you know, they have to answer to the Boy Scouts of America and also a council. So they will have protocol that should match up with the Board of Health. Um, and the timing is flexible, but they were thinking um, of trying to have day camps, uh, renting I don't know, one of the cabins, they have about 100 scouts, not all of them will participate. They'll probably have less than half or so. Um, but since this is close, generally they go elsewhere. Um, they might have bigger participation, but they would obviously monitor that. They want to spend a week, Monday through Friday, um, just have being at the camp. They have to do a, a lot of like outdoorsy stuff. So um, one of the, the, the stuff, the things that they have to do is they have to do like a water safety thing that doesn't have to be done at the cove. It can be done, you know, on another part of um, the lake. They also have some other like hiking stuff that they have to do. They would like to run the camp Monday through Friday. And the idea is they come in in the morning and then they leave in the afternoon. They would be, it would be wonderful if they would be able to stay overnight but that's something that they don't think is going to be possible and should it be possible down the road they'd include that so technically they just want to be on the campgrounds monday through friday running a day camp uh, so that the boys can get their merit badges um, and they would like a zoom call and i think we should facilitate that um, with maybe um, you know bill definitely and, and just just a few of our um, uh, commission members just so that we can they can share what they'd like to do. I, I really am hopeful that if this is successful, we can use this sort of as like a, a, a blueprint to offer to other scouts because every town has a scout troop and um, some towns like Hanson even has two um, and they have two different type of scout troops. There's a Cub Scouts, which would do the day, and there's also the Boy Scout, which would be the older kids that can, you know, maybe do some overnight. So I thought it was really exciting. I know we've been dying to do camps, uh, camp outs or camping weekends or weeks over at the camp. This is a great opportunity. So 
if we can be flexible, even if it's just this one scout troop this summer, it'll be a nice blueprint moving forward. Okay. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Thank you, Juvie. Discussion? I don't have any. Oh, go ahead. You allowed to do that? So here's the thing. The, the Board of Health um, wants us to come up with a proposal based on <laughs> what what they have so far so here's the the issue right now is that the governor hasn't allowed for bigger um gatherings yeah. but they're, they're all related to indoor gatherings so here's the tricky part about this we have to get some kind of information related to outdoor gathering because if you have a bigger space then you can really um you know kind of make the argument that you can socially distance. So what the Boy Scouts are trying to say is that based on the space that we have in the campground, that they are going to arrange it so that scouts are socially distanced so that they go to centers and there's very little interaction, um, you know, really not close interaction anyway. There'll be like interaction within like a six foot area. So for example, if they had a table for, I'm going to tell you, like not tying, for example, this is just an example. I don't know what they're going to have at their camp, not tying. Um, there's a leader there and the boys are spread out. Nobody's side by side, but the leader's there to show them how to tie knots. The boys do it. They get like their little stamp in, the, in their book and then they go on to the next activity. They're gonna have a very structured day. So, um, and given, you know, the, the, the Boy Scouts are obviously um, tied to making sure they meet the regulations on their end. I think it's, it's, it's good enough to give to the Board of Health to give them a plan. And to say, hey, this is what they've got, and then um, maybe we'll get approval on that end. Because the board of selectmen, I tell you, they're not going to approve anything we do um, without the board of health, you know, stamp of approval. Um, and so that that's why we have to come up with proposals, some plans, um, you know, with with kind of like the idea that we're going to have to say, you know, given permission or, you know, given a pending approval, I think is, is what we really need to say. Pending approval, this is what we would like to do. And then they can kind of change it as is. But um, okay. that's that's basically it in a nutshell. Okay. So that being said, any other comments, questions, concerns, discussion? My only two, one is about uh, doing the water certifications right, at the coast. Bill? Bill, this is you, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah. No. The only uh, just the water certification. I would just want more info on that. Just in the event if the cove isn't open, I don't know if we're allowed to allow people if they're renting a space to use the water if there's no lifeguards. That's my only one concern on that piece. And then just second on the overnight i would be okay with it as long as they probably limited the amount of people in the cabin because those cabins obviously are not very big so you i don't think they're to using to be food. honest with you i don't think they're going to use those cabins i think their idea was more for being outside so if any of those cabins are going to be used it's probably going to be used for um you know like an instructor running something that that that, that, that instructor would maybe occupy that cabin but the boys they're they're looking more, I think, to use the camp as a as a a better location than a church basement. You know, if you're gonna do something, for sure, uh, like a marriage. So I think they're they're renting the camp for ambiance. If, okay. I mean, at the end of the day. Okay. So, Bill, you can find out about a lifeguard, and that will factor into a charge for the Boy Scouts to be at the camp if we are allowed to have them there. And depending on the protocols, we can certainly come up with letting them have access, I'm sure, to um, not the Frontier Cabin. What's the other cabin? Um, the Pavilion, maybe? The Pavilion. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word right now. The Pavilion Cabin. And then they could have a home base sort of while they're at the camp. And yes, um, my son was a scout, so I understand that they want to do it in that environment so that it seems a little more realistic to them. Any other comments, questions, concerns? 
so juvie um we're certainly open to that and if and we will certainly meet with them and bill can set up a zoom call and we'll figure it out Awesome. Okay. I'm glad. And you know, they're, like I said, I think they're, they're flexible with the time frames. So they'd wanted, I, they thought that it would be kind of neat to do something, you know, July 5th through the 10th, but if not, you know, then we'll, then they'll move it. Um, but I think we'll, we'll probably find out a little bit more um, moving forward, but that those were the dates that they had proposed. Um, and, you know, we can, it, it, Bill, Will you uh, let me know when you want to schedule that Zoom call? Because I think what I'd like to do is, in, you know, kind of uh, facilitate that meeting, introduce you to um, the scout masters that um, need to be on the call. Okay. Yeah. If it's only going to be, say, like us and Diane, it shouldn't take too much to schedule. If there are going to be multiple commissioners on it, then we will probably have to go through the process of setting it up so that we've got an agenda and all that, because technically, you know, if we have a quorum on that, we'll we'll have to have it posted. No, we're well, going to make sure we don't have a quorum. It's yeah, just, I know it's, it's going to be, okay. this is informational, guys. It's so, you know, once we hash out the information, maybe we ask them to come to one of our meetings so that we can kind of lay out everything. So um, if you guys wouldn't mind, we're just doing this for information conversation at this point. So that we have something more to report at the next meeting. Right. Okay. So Zoom call will be set up and we're looking for lifeguards, correct? Regarding the Boy Scout troop and their water certification badge, or whatever it is. Um, yeah. And you know, um, Juvie, your next event. Okay, which one was that? Which was a story the walk? Project. Uh, yeah. you know, it was the service project. Oh, okay. I think okay. maybe so, the benches. Hold yeah, on, the benches. Juvie, hold on a moment, please. Brian yeah. Frizzetti. Yeah, um, I know things are like time sensitive right now. I know you're looking forward to July, but I again after listening to the board of selecting meeting, the board of health has an awful lot on their plate with what they're going to have to come up with the police station structure, the fire station structure, the town right. hall structure. I'm not thinking we're going to be at the top of the totem pole. I kind of think we're going to be at the bottom of the list. Um, so someone might want to have a conversation with the Board of Health before I even have. getting a conversation Brian, with the Board of Health. Brian, I, I, was given, I was given guidelines by Teresa Cocho. I can forward that to Bill to send to all of you. Um, those oh, okay. guidelines, though, are, are fluid and they're changing. So the big issue is that they, that they want us to come up with some proposals that they can then review and that they can then advise because at this point, you know, it's going to be a back and forth. So we need to come up with with some proposals and then they can tell us whether or not it's yay or nay. But it's changing. Okay. What they're giving us this week will be different next week. Right. Okay. Yeah, everything. So we said that this is a fluid situation. We said that they are flexible. So we know we're not at the top of the totem pole. We're going to move on from this right now as long as we get each event with a protocol. We should be fine. Moving on, Juvie, your next event. No, so this one is the um, the service project. So um, the scouts, we could not invite a lot of the little scouts that wanted to do the Eagle project. And you know, uh, you guys, I just wanted to say, Brian and Brian, you um, and anybody else that was involved in the facilities, um, the cabins. You know, you guys have done a lot of work, and they were really impressed with the grounds. And we know that there was still some work that needed to be done, but there was so much potential and the leaders that were there were so excited to find this place because my son's in the Braintree Weymouth um, troop and they really would love some someplace closer. And honestly, they didn't even know that this existed. So um, it's a real opportunity for us, I think, to start getting some more regional attention and what we talked about was they would love for the other little scouts to come over and do little pro service projects. So, you know, we always talk about trying to get volunteers to do raking. These guys earn little merit badges for simple things like raking. And I don't know if you, you noticed this, but they graded or tried to, the kids did with a few uh, kids that they had, they tried to grade the parking lot. And they did. Um, 
and they got they got some kind of a service hour for that. So those are the things that the Boy Scouts like to do, that they'd like to get the kids to do. So he saw the state of like the uh, area where, um, you know, the, the first pyre, fire pit was, the Needles Lodge fire pit. And he started to say, would we be interested in maybe figuring out different service projects to landscape that area? I mean, we don't know what other scouts need to do Eagle projects, but maybe trying to put together uh, benches around the um, the fire pit. Uh, and these are uh, benches that I, th I sent a PowerPoint. Hopefully you guys got that, got the PowerPoint. These benches are recyclable plastic. They have them in Forge Pond in Hanover. We'd like prettier ones, but they, they, they'll do. They've lasted six years over. If you, so if you walk over there, you'll see them. We'd like to get four of them. And we'd like to um, put them uh, around the fire pit um, and then we want to set them in brick. And what our hope was, and I've, I'm going to talk to my Rotary Club about it, um, it was to use, um, you know, like a nonprofit like the Rotary Club or maybe another nonprofit. I don't know who's going to step up moving forward, but another nonprofit to help sell bricks um, so that we can help fund um, this project. I have two possible sponsors for the benches, but not so much the bricks that they're gonna be set in. I, we can send you a plan moving forward, but our hope was to get the, some of the scouts, the younger scouts to help with that, to come in. We're talking maybe like a dozen to come in and set benches and put like little flowers up um, for a fun summer um, project. And it'll just dress up where the fire pit was. So just to add a little bit more because we know brides and you know parties tend to come out and it might be kind of a nice place for a picture. Thank you, Juvie. Um, any questions? Discussion? Anyone? Okay, so Juvie. Yeah. I um, we need to reach out to the different Boy Scout councils, first of all, so that we can let them know that we are a place that service projects could would be very welcomed. Okay? And Diane, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, I think a lot of times you just need an example, you know, and if you had an example and, and, and we saw it work out the way we're hoping it would work out with Troop 138, then it's definitely something that you can then say, hey, this is, you know, the playbook. And these guys like to, you know, use kind of protocol and stuff. So I think if we can, if we can do this, then we can do all those other projects that we're talking about. Okay. So that is another contact and some more phone calls that need to be made to different Boy Scout councils. I, um, I had three daughters where I was a Girl Scout leader. I don't know what the councils are for Boy Scouts. Are we like a Plymouth County one and? Well, yeah, we are, we're actually um, under Old Colony. So there's Squanto, which I think Whitman is in. I believe we're Old Colony. And then my son, Braintree, Weymouth, that whole area, they're Mayflower. So we okay. just within this small area, there's three. Okay. Um, so we need to get numbers for them. And yeah. and make some phone calls. So that's something we'll get on. Um, as far as the brick, it is a great idea. I'm wondering. I'm not. I'm wondering how we could market it and talk it up a little bit. So, so I got to tell you, I, I have to. I have to say a precursor to this is um, we're doing a. Um, a fundraiser for the food uh, pantry for uh, right. for Hanson, the Rotary Club. So we need to focus on that right now. My thought is after this is done, our food pantry um, event is done, we'd like to do a similar thing, or at least I'd, I have to propose this. You know, um, we're always looking for kind of service projects. So I have to propose this to my club. I haven't even gotten you know, this on the table, but I know Mac, my son was interested because it's it kind of affects his project. So he's going to be a speaker at a Rotary Club. I think we need to, I just wanted to put this out on the table so that the Rec Commission could could think about it, 
could approve it so that when we do present to the Rotary Club, we can say we have the full backing of the rec commission and then you know we can put it in front of the selectmen as well but the idea is we're going to use the same pattern of selling these we're, we're basically selling uh yard signs for the food pantry if you make a donation right. of five dollars right you get a yard sign if this works out really well then i could come back to you guys and say okay you know let's do the same thing but instead of yard signs we can do the bricks um, and then, and then we can move forward. But I just did, I didn't want to present this to my Rotary Club without having shared the idea with you and getting some initial support. So okay. is, that's why I brought it up. Is there going to be some sort of engraving on this brick? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you're a family, if you're the Johnson family, like my family, right? And, um, you right. know, you want to put, like, I, I plan to buy a couple of bricks. We don't, the price point, guys, we have to, you know, that's something that we're going to just hash out later. But I'm just going to throw this one out. $50 for a brick. I would put my name, my, my, my son's, I have three sons. I would put each of my son's name on the brick. So Bo Johnson, Aiden Johnson, Mac Johnson. And basically, I would pay to have that brick uh, put into the, um, I think it's going to be like a four by two area where the benches are going to have to sit. Into the um, class. Yeah, I, I don't know the measurements, but something to that effect. So basically, we sell these bricks, and the people that are donating are getting the benefit of getting something inscribed on the brick. We did this for the playground at Maquan, so it's not something like most people are kind of, they know about this stuff, you know, they're used to it. All right. Thank you, Juvie. Um, it was a great idea. Thank you for doing all the legwork on it. Um, any comment, discussion, anything other, any further questions, anything? Okay, so for that, we will get a Zoom call going. We will be looking out to reach to the different Boy Scout councils and we will put it on our website as well that service projects from local scout groups are welcome. We can reach out via emails to the Boy Scout councils as well. Okay, and can you can you can I just get some kind of formal uh, writing or I don't know in the books record that you guys will support the putting of the the benches around the um, around the fireplace uh, with the bricks? You know, given that board of selectmen approve it, as well as you know the Rotary Club agreeing to even be part of um the whole thing okay so because we should have it approved before because time is of the essence as well okay so would someone like to make a motion that the camp will support an initiative for service project by local boy scout council to put together benches in platforms with a um charitable donation in return for placing bricks Pending approval of Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, and um, a commitment by the Rotary Club. A commitment by the Rotary Club. Thank you. No move. No move. No move. <laughs> Brian, John, you second. And I'll all second. the. I Everybody? Aye. Aye. Thank you, John. Aye. I, UV, obviously, I, Melissa, I, thank you, Joan, is she giving a thumbs I, up, Brian, thank I, you, I, thanks, Joan, <laughs> okay, um, moving on, thanks, guys, thanks, Juvie, um, and I just want to point out, uh, just time-wise, so it's five o'clock, uh, we're slated until 5.30, so we're just going to have to, Yep, we're going to fly through. Let me move through. along a little faster. Awesome. Yep. Uh, the next one, Juve, anything on the farmer's market? Guys, we we got to table that one. <laughs> you know, at this point, I, I have to share with you that that's something that we I have to bring up later when some of these um, restrictions are eased because we're looking at trying to get um, the entire north and south cabins rented out, but we just can't make the numbers work if we don't have better um, 
yeah so if you wouldn't mind can we table this to the next time i yeah. think we need this right. stuff yeah okay thanks. yeah let's uh we'll table that in the story walk yes yep story walk was tabled at, at board of selectmen as well pending um protocols and set forth by the governor and board of health etc so moving on after those two all right after that um just looking at our cancellation policy adjustments, I, I know that obviously Board of Selectmen, you know, voted for anybody getting affected by COVID-19 that we are able to refund. Um, obviously, this is continuing to push in farther into the season. Um, so we just want to look at, again, obviously, being no fault of their own, just a refund policy of if people have to cancel. Obviously, we're trying to get people to schedule they're trying to schedule their dates just for 2021 some people are able to do that but obviously some people just between now financial hardship and all that are no longer able to have their weddings um and, and obviously our, our kind of base thing is that we typically keep the deposit but i always in, in light of this you know I, I think this goes above and beyond just you know normal policy and you know, I think we have to have the human element human element first before anything else. Any comments? Any discussion? Okay, then I'm going to speak. Bill, I totally agree with you. Um, these cancellations do have to consider the human element and no one could have predicted, obviously. So obviously we try to encourage planning at a different time but given financial situations for everybody it makes sense to give people money back have that many people requested no right now oh. um it's so far the only wedding we've refunded has been that april one um we do have another one that was slated for august that they're gonna have to cancel uh, instead of rescheduling they just too many logistical and, and financial issues on that um so really for the most part we've had people just booking to next year and only you know a handful of people that are considering right now uh, a refund okay did um oh. who's that who's caller two is that dory um is or that caller? me so yeah, yeah. Oh, it is okay thanks if i diane if i could interject bill and i have been doing a you know great job of getting most people are going to 2021. We have a specific issue of a uh, wedding in October and she cannot go 2021. She is just one in alone that wants to cancel. And the question is, can she be refunded? And it's October and she just doesn't think it's gonna happen. And so that's her specific question. I have two things, but that's number one. That's her specific question. Her wedding October, can she be refunded for cancellation of her wedding due to this? So that's why Billy and I wanted to put it before you tonight. Um, it, is the reason that she wants to be refunded just because she doesn't think it's going to happen? Or did she say that there's any other reason? Like she couldn't plan the rest of the wedding? It wouldn't be ready for October or what? Well, her reasoning is that people are coming from out of state and she's afraid that come October that, you know, it's not going to be going to happen and she's the only one i mean everybody you know we've had july and august and they're moving out to 2021 she doesn't want to do 2021 and she so she wants to cancel she you know doesn't she doesn't know what to do and the question is specifically does she get a refund okay anybody have discussion on this questions this is due huh? to uh concerns with the COVID, correct Oh, yeah. absolutely because of the COVID, because they want to go they want to go forward but she's just thinking in october you know with the phases it's it's, it's right. not going to happen so my um, question dory is she asking for the money back now or if it if the restrictions aren't lifted by october can she have her money back no she's she's diane she's kind of asking for it now you know kind of putting us in a in a position kind of um, and it's October, so none of us know what, where we're going to be in October. And so this is the first one that's not moving it on, and uh, or just you know asking for a refund of June or July, obviously. 
So this, this was a conundrum. That's why we wanted to bring it before you tonight. Um, I, you know, is it COVID related? It's definitely COVID related in her mind that it's not going to go forward in October. That's, that's her thinking. Um, John, and she's looking for an answer. Okay. Most private facilities are not refunding um, right now. We're not a private facility. We're a town-owned facility, so it's a little different. But I would say for that, maybe wait a month, see where, where everything goes with it. But most private facilities, venue facilities, are not refunding any money. They have made, they're having to move. Some facilities are even charging people to move, believe it or not. I wouldn't go that far, but, um, you know, it's a little different where we're, we're a town-owned facility. So is it going to kill us? We found it. I mean, my, this is Melissa. This is my two cents being in the Thanks. events business. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, like John said, like most people are not refund. This is not technically an act of God. So, I mean, at the worst, I mean, I would just because I, I would just say maybe give them an admin fee or something like that. You know, take a, take a 500. How much, how much is the total that they're in? They they have booked for a Friday wedding in October, so it's thirty five hundred. They've already paid the deposit of seventeen fifty one thousand seven hundred fifty plus the forty dollar the uh, fire service. Okay. Yeah, I mean maybe wait and wait another month, Diane, and then maybe we do like a five hundred dollar admin fee or something. Um. My two cents. I. Does anybody else have any thoughts before I speak? Okay, I don't want to say that, I don't want to give it back quite yet. I would like to see where we are in, say, July or August even. I mean, that's if August, when when is the wedding in October? October what? Uh, October 2nd, so the beginning of the month. Beginning of the month. Um, if we could wait, until maybe the end of June or the beginning of July or the middle of July to make this decision pending what the governor says because invitations would typically go out um, for an October wedding. They would more than likely go out by the end of July. So maybe by, let's say, July 1. If we could I have a, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, that sounds fair, you know, and that's definitive. July one. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if we, if the governor says, you know, gatherings can be up to how many people are slated for her wedding? Do we even know? Yeah, her wedding was. Um, I have it right here. Uh, Two hundred people. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she exactly. So she. That's why she's thinking that's not gonna happen by October. And I would agree with her. And I would. I. I would yeah. wholeheartedly agree. But I'd like to have a definitive date so that we sort of set a precedent here. That. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. October, so that gives her July, August, September, and October. That's four months. Well, that's awesome. That would be great to have that to be able to say, you know what, we wait till July 1, July 1, we see where we are, and then we can determine. Because she's putting the pressure on us now, and we don't know. It's May. We right. don't know. So, I mean, it takes, yeah. you know, it takes a couple of weeks to order your invitations. It takes a couple of weeks to, you know, you have to send them out at least six weeks to eight weeks in advance. And so I think July 1 is fair. Um, I and do I do, and I think a nominal fee of, like Melissa said, five hundred dollars that we would keep is also fair. I agree. Yeah, that, that, that sounds have good. Because thoughts on that. Okay, then with who's caller five? That's me, I think. Yeah, that's okay. me. Okay. So um, someone, go ahead. So I was just going to say, if we can just 
at least entertain a motion for people that, you know, obviously either it, it directly corresponds to the governor saying that they can't have the wedding or financial hardship that we are able to refund our, our wedding guests. Obviously with the main goal being to reschedule, but in the event that it comes down to a financial issue, again, I, I, I'd i rather, you know, again, be human and, and try to do as much as we can for these people given the circumstances. Right. And I think a four month window is reasonable. I mean, July to, you know, August, September, October, it's three months. It's three. Oh, yeah. No, I wasn't talking about that specific October one, because obviously they're saying that it's not a, a monetary or financial thing. It's just more they don't think it's going to happen. I'm saying for people that, you know, because we had some people, you know, spouses have lost jobs now and everything. And with what they've put on a deposit for the wedding, they're now saying, you know, we can't have the wedding. We Financially, they're not able to have the wedding. Right. So I think if we give people a three month window on that, and and we keep a nominal fee. I, I don't I don't think that's unreasonable. Are we in agreement with that? John? Yes. yes. Melissa. Juvie left. Okay, Brian and Joan. Sure. Okay. No. No. No for, no for Joan. So it's not four months. October second is the beginning of the month, so it's really not that many months away. I corrected it three. Right, it's three. So July, if we did July one, July to August, August September, September to October, it's three months. So I think three months is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three months. Okay. So we'd okay. like to make a motion then to someone like to make a motion to refund covid related um covid related issues you know i don't i don't even know how to word this it's so in my head yeah so let's make a motion to um upon request from the client or the customer to refund all wedding deposits, um, particularly related to COVID-19 protocols and restrictions with a three month window and keeping a $500 portion of the deposit for administrative purposes. Uh, add one thing to that, well, actually two things to that. Please, sure. Diane. Uh, yep. One, obviously, it would be upon approval of the Board of Selectmen. Upon approval the of the Board other of Selectmen. One, the other one, the other piece is we may want to reach out to legal counsel and see if we can put that in our rental agreements. Because mm -hmm. right now, we don't have any any such thing as, like, if you cancel, we charge you X amount of dollars. So okay. we're really not covered to charge them anything. It's kind of an all or none at this point until you know we can get it into our rental agreements just right. we'll, we'll clarify with town council because the way it's slated right now is that we're technically allowed to keep the entire deposit so if we only end up keeping 500 i mean you know we're still doing them a favor but yeah that's uh i will reach out to town council to see if there's you know any gray areas or an area that we you know maybe shouldn't be stumbling upon but yeah we can get confirmation from them yeah, okay. That would be great. We don't. We don't have a cancellation policy. We do. We do. It, it, yes, but not for something like this. It, yeah, it's like you can cancel, but you can have your okay. wedding. We'll keep the deposit for every wedding within the year. Right. Like, this is so different. Right. The cancellation so, policy is we keep the deposit usually. Yeah. But or they can reschedule, but. This is they want the deposit back because they're not having the wedding they don't due to no fault of their own. Right. She doesn't want to reschedule. Right. So exactly. So I right, mean that's, that's yeah, great. it's hard that's because that's sorry. Right. Go ahead, Melissa. 
No, that's the hard thing because it's like she she has a choice to reschedule and she's able to, but she just chooses not to. So that's, that's the, she chooses. that's the, yeah, you know, that's She's the rub. in that. That's right. Exactly. Other, others have all just, you know, grabbed for 21 and she is not, and she's just, you know, digging in her heels and saying it's October, but I don't think it's going to happen. So what are you going to do for me? So like, I, I, I don't know. So, um, okay. So, so we already had discussion and there's a motion on the floor. Are we continuing with discussion? So do we want, what is the discussion? Do we want to, given the situation, do we want to give her her money back? Or do we not want to and just say you have the option of rescheduling and it doesn't have to be a wedding? It can be any kind, it can be a family reunion. It can be any kind of party. What do we want to say? If I could, Diane, I would, I would want to move forward with the solution. Uh, again, based on the two, I, you know, talking to the legal counsel and talking to the board of selectmen and getting maybe their input towards this. I, I just don't want to get us all caught up in a conundrum and then we're going to, you know, you're going to get bad press in the paper, and I know we don't need that. Um, I absolutely understand, Melissa, 190%. But when people start crying COVID, we might run into a problem. Okay. Exactly. So before we, the motion will be voided now. So before we make a motion then, and before we put forth for a vote, we should speak to town council and um the town manager on such an issue Does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah i would definitely thank you very much moving on to the next item in the agenda because we only have about 10 minutes go ahead uh okay so i just obviously want uh the next thing is mac johnson's eagle scout project um they came and did an amazing job with the fire pits and we actually ended up getting four fire pits instead of three because they actually rebuilt both of the ones in the north end. Initially, they were just going to do the one main fire pit, and they had enough stuff to do uh, the other one. Um, so thank you again to Max and everybody that made that possible. Um, and I just kind of bounced through this so we can try to... Uh, trees and stumps, our highway director is... Um, getting the coach together now so that he can pick obviously the you know best you know best quote in terms of uh doing the uh stump grinding uh, again it's likely going to be a phased approach looking at priority areas um you know and then and then doing the other areas as we have the money to do so uh but for now there is no uh no date set for that yet because he hasn't found the contractor that he's going to go with okay uh, do you know if the fourth fire pit in the north end was actually completed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are all four fire pits. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Because it looked like it was still needed. Juvie had said some stuff still needed to be done to it. Okay. On some of them, the only thing that was left was that they were going to come and wipe them down to kind of clean them up. But it, it looks like all the mortar, everything's in it, they're all set in place. So I think, other than maybe them coming back to clean them, I don't think there's anything else. Okay. Next item. Um, and so, yeah, and so Can I you have pause to one second, back please? real quick. I'm sorry. I heard two people talking at once, and I don't know who it was. Call that was me. Call okay. On the yes, Max Johnson, I just need one second on it. Can we maybe. um? compile a thank you letter to him um, from the Recreation Commission and obviously Recreation Director. So that way he has something that he can show his friends and neighbors in the Eagle Scouts. Absolutely. Dory, would you please put something up? Absolutely. Thank you so thank much. You. Okay, moving on. Okay, um, really quick too, just in regard to um, some of the weddings. So there has been at least one inquiry and we may, may get more. Um, if they are able, and then this is different from the other one, but doing the ceremony still this year and then trying, you know, shooting for the reception next year. 
um, so I guess, you know, we would just, I guess, need a motion to allow that as long as they follow Baker's guidelines. We do have uh, a release from town council that they drew up so that in the event, if this does happen, it, it stemmed from last meeting uh, where the people wanted to look to try to have their ceremony. So, you know, I would like for us to be able to allow people, if they can abide by the guidelines, to have their ceremony, you know, get in, get out, do it, and then you know, schedule their reception for next year. Okay. Um, so if they have their reception, I think we can do that as long as they're having their reception with us and they book it. Yeah. 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 Are you Billy, are you talking to me, Harris? That one? Somebody driving? Or is... Yeah, that's the one that I was talking yeah. about, Doris. Okay, yeah. Because that's the one that they had was scheduled. Thank you for bringing it up. They were scheduled July 10th, 20, and they have already rebooked to July 10th, 21. But they just want one hour on the balcony. They don't even need to go into the lodge. They just want one hour to kind of elope and uh, ha you know get get married. And that that was their question that Billy was just talking about. Right, and I if think we do... I think we voted on they that already. They... That that was doable. With, okay, so yes, we say it's doable they, for everybody. It was specifically for one couple last time, but we say just any of our couples that you know. I guess we'll make a motion that will allow that. I think we. I think we should. So, um, any discussion on that? Uh, just a quick note on that one. I don't know if it's going to be needed or not, but you might also want to work that into the rental agreements. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I'm lot. hoping that we're never going to have another pandemic, so hopefully we won't have to deal with this next year. You're never going to no, say I, that. Right, I agree 100%, but say one of your other uh, rentals turns around and says, well, we still want to have the reception there. I, I don't know, I'm just looking, I mean, if, if legal counsel says go with it, I have no problem with it. And I again, I don't know if it's something you might want to work into it just temporarily. Um, that's, that's right, yeah, I'll make cool. another note to ask town council. Thank you. I yeah, just this, want to make sure we're covered because this is sticky, this whole setup. So my oh, question, my question then becomes that um, in the future, if we do go with this kind of policy and they want to have their wedding reception, just their wedding um, ceremony at the camp, I certainly don't want to cancel yeah. an entire wedding because they want a four o'clock reception a four o'clock ceremony so exactly so well, that, that um, was my question like what if something happens in july that you know th that we can do something we don't know that's the problem right so i'm not sure i want to put this in forever on the rental agreement i think we can put it in maybe as a temporary or some sort of addendum um that says at the discretion of the Recreation Commission. So maybe we could, again, like you said, speak to town council on it and find out what our options are. But I, I think on this one, specifically July 10th, if we could just get a motion and a vote that this couple could have one hour and that's Absolutely. all they need and they have rebooked everything for 2021. Absolutely. Um, that would be great. It's for their original date, right? July 10th. So. Yeah, it's for their original yeah. date. And they've rebooked everything for 2021. They just want one hour. They don't even need to go in the lodge. They just, you know, want to elope, as they said. Okay, so with the balcony. motion to allow a July 10th ceremony for a customer who has already rebooked due to COVID-19. So moved. Thank you, John Zuko. Anyone want a second? Second. Thank you, Joan. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, so you can Thank let you. them know. All right, I think Thank that's you. all the time we have. Do you want, um, we can try to take five more minutes and then blast through the remaining, because at least I'll update you the little bit I have on the cove. Um, okay, perfect. Go, go. Obviously, we're, we're, we're working to see if, if we're going to be able to make a go of it. Um, I have a phone interview next week with 
the young lady who put in for the beach director position. Um, so I can update everybody once, you know, I've chatted with her. Um, in the event, if she doesn't work out, we do have some of our other lifeguards, at least one or two that were recommended by Emma that could step into that position. So even if she doesn't work out, we may have a backup on, on that respect. I was down at the beach today and took the tape measure with the 12 foot, you know, and marked it out in, and I'm going to say, you know, on a slightly conservative, but pretty close, we'd be able to do roughly 25 spots down at the beach. I'm sorry, 20, 24 to 25, okay. you know, getting people spaced out and, you know, making sure that there's ample room around the entranceway and the bathrooms and all that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk to Gil a little bit more at the Board of Health because I think he was also down there and, and uh, you know, I kind of want to get his feedback on that. But I went and, and marked everything out and um, I mean, it looks it looks like, you know, maybe if, if we do have to go to, you know, specific, you know, areas, designated areas, we can do about 25 and, and we'll just have to kind of figure out, you know, how we go about doing like a reservation system or something like that. Um, but okay. yeah, we're not going to be able to do season passes. We're likely not going to be able to collect cash. We're going to have to figure out how to do everything online. Um, and that's going to be the other hiccup is that we don't have the greatest internet down it. So as long as we can get people to pre-register, which is probably what's going to be needed anyway, as long as we don't have to handle, you know, any card swiping or money down at the cove, I think we can make it work, you know, depending on what the guidelines end up being. Okay. Diane, can I take a second on that one, please? John Zuko's had his hand up. Go ahead, John. Oh, sorry, John. We need to update the web page. Because it's got all stuff from last year on Cranberry Cove. So. Yeah, it's been and there all year. It's yep. been there since last September. That was the last update I did. So at least something for info. Because people are always asking, can we kayak in the Cove? What's going on? And then I posted about trespassing. and got called every name in the book. Because I'm Mr. Evil. Because I posted about people. It's been a free-for-all down there. People are jumping off the docks. They just have a day. Let me interrupt yeah, you. I mean, we've been. But yeah. there is. I'm sorry. There is nothing we can do. We cannot monitor people. I literally was down there. People hopped the fence right in front of me. They don't care. Okay. They're going to get on the beach. As long as we have no trespassing signs posted. And by the way, Bill, I do think they need to be a little bit bigger. But as long as we have no trespassing signs posted, which we do, and we have several, we are not liable. There is a public voting access area there without a fence people can do that they can vote at the pond without having to even buy a beach pass we are not responsible okay so all these phone calls who's down at the beach why it doesn't matter there's nothing we can do and the police have made it very clear that they to swing by on various routes several times a day other than that, nothing we can do until we have some kind of fencing system or, you know, put some giant bubble around everything. It's just not going to happen. People are going to find a way to get in. Well, and I do have, or I'm in the process of ordering more signs. Uh, you know, after talking to Chief, you know, he had asked that uh, we put a few more signs up. So I got a um, line out to Webster Printing. And I'm waiting on a quote from them for, uh, you know, a couple more signs. Um, and yeah, I will, uh, I will update the, I'll update the website because Chief had also asked about that. He's like, even if, you know, if you're not even sure that you're going to open, but at least if you can put something out there just so people have an idea of this is, if we are able to, when we're looking to open by, um, you know, just so, you know, people have an idea. So we will, we will get that obviously update on the website and then, the Facebook and, and Cranberry Cove Facebook. I know. Okay. Sorry, that's um, Kwani and Cranberry Cove Facebook. Okay. Um, it is now six, five. Six, the rest of the I agenda, I'm sorry, is going to have to wait. Can I jump in for five quick seconds, please? Five seconds. Go. Okay. Um, the board is welcome meeting on six nine. Can we have an agenda put? For the um, Recreation Commission to join in that? 
to discuss yes, the uh, special opening. You. Go ahead. Thank you, John. Thank you, Brian. Dory, could you please, or Bill, could you please have an agenda posted? Yep. Sure. Okay. And just four very, very fast points. Uh, factors to consider when we're talking about reopening this cove is the number of people that will be able to be there at once. Will people listen to the gatekeepers, which are teenagers, um, that say that we're at capacity? Um, how will they be able to place social distancing, especially while swimming? And is it financially worth it knowing capacity will be reduced, however salaries will not? Just something to think about. Right. We we don't even know if we're able to open it. Those were all the points we brought up at Board of Selectmen, and I've made Bill aware of them. So thank you for making everybody else aware, Brian. And um, Bill and I are going to meet with Board of Health possibly and figure it all out. Bill, um, you're going to meet with Todd regarding the finances of it all, and yep. we'll see where we go from there. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I'm going, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting? I'll make a motion, motion to adjourn. Yeah, maybe John. John, <laughs> thank you for making the motion. Brian Zucco, I mean, I mean Brian Frazetti, are you second? <laughs> second. Yes, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. <laughs> thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Bill, I will speak to you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll uh, let you know once I talk to John. Okay, thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, you're welcome.